Oh, I'm Mark Cooch with Teva Corporation. I'm the president and CEO, and I just thought I'd talk to you a little bit today about uh, potash, the different sources of them, and some things that are going on with them in your soil and things. So just give you something to think about. Um, Murate of potash, your O60, is like I've said in other videos, is you know it's the number two fertilizer sold in the United States. So, uh, but there's certain things that go on in your soil when you use murate of potash. Uh, first of all, you know, the, the chemical symbol for murated potash is KCL. So it is a salt complex, you know, that's going. So when your plant takes that up, it has to take it up in a salt form uh, to do it. So the salt index on um, murated potash is anywhere from 114 to 117. So it's one of the saltiest types of uh, fertilizers that guys can use out there. And why we worry about salt? Well, salt does a couple of things in the soil. It, it makes your ground more droughty. So if you think about us, if we eat something salty for lunch or whatever, we're drinking a lot of water all day long to try to satisfy that salt. The same thing happens in our soil. If we end up over years of time accumulating a lot of salt in the soil, then your soil becomes more droughty because it's going to try to satisfy that salt before it is, uh, you know, the plant's going to get it. The other thing that happens in there is salt is causes fracturing of your soil. So if you've got soil particles, and they're all crazy shaped out there. They're just all different kinds of shapes. That's why you have flocculation in your soil and things like that. Well, salt comes in here and fractures off all these little edges of it. And so what happens is, is you got, you got uh, that in your soil. So you got soil out here, and when it fractures all these soil particles, they become uniform, so they look like these pile of paper right here. So you can see I can compact these papers down and they're real tight so no water or air can percolate through there and do that kind of thing for you. But if you have these irregular shapes where your salt has not done it, then you got papers, you know, you got soil particles that are all shaped like this. And so if I had them piled up, you know, I'd have a pile of papers this tall and water and air could percolate down through there. So that's one thing to remember about when you're, you know, when you're using murate of potash is that it does have a very high salt level, which, you know, goes to having soil compaction. But what happens too then is when that soil particle, when those hit the soil, um, the only thing that can break that bond in between the K and the CL that's in there is an oxidizer. Well, we have nitrate nitrogen in the soil, which is an oxidizer. So what happens then is, is as you put murate of potash down and you have nitrate nitrogen in your soil or you apply nitrate nitrogen to the soil, that will come in and that will break the bond in between the potassium and the, and the chloride. And what happens then is you turn that chloride becomes into a chlorine. And when that happens, then your soil, it's gonna affect your soil life in the soil so that you'll start having less biological life in the soil where you have these higher salt levels in your soil and you have your higher, you know, where that chlorine has then been changed because of that oxidizer that has come in there and introduced that to the soil. So we need to think about that because we all know that biological life is, is very important in our soil. It's becoming more known now. You know, in the 35 years that I've been in the business, it's the biological life. There wasn't many talking about it when I started, and now it's one of the hotter topics that we hear out there, you know. So we don't want to do anything that we, we know is affecting um, our, our biological life. Because without that life in the soil, breaking down nutrients and making them available to the plant, then we're not going to have the efficiencies out of whatever kind of fertilizer you decide to use. Uh, but there are some different forms besides the murate of potash that, that are out there that you can use. There's potassium sulfate, there's potassium nitrate, uh, there's liquid uh, uh, potassiums out there that you can use. So there's different kinds out there, like potassium sulfate is K2SO4, so you don't get any of the chlorine and you get the sulfur there. So it gives you a better option, and yes, I know it's more expensive and uh, then the potassium chloride, but it gives you a better option if you're looking at for down the road, you know, of your soil life and what you're wanting to leave to you and your children down the road of, you know, of keeping that as healthy as possible as far as biological life goes and, of you know, and keeping the salt levels down, then it gives you a different option, you know. Uh, the liquids are becoming very popular, you know, now too. You can foliar feed with them on some instances, 
and you can also use them as soil applied, you know, two by two or whatever it is, you know, like a 0024 or the 0030s or 002517, your potassium thiosulfates. So there's other options out there for us to use on potassium to supplement what you're doing, you know, through the, uh, you know, the dry fertilizer program as, as well as, you know, starter fertilizers, you know, doing in the row, which we talked about in other videos that we've done. So it's just something for you guys to think about. Uh, when you're using dry fertilizer and the amounts that you're putting out there and what may be going in your soil. Thank you.